Hi, welcome to the October episode of More or Less. This podcast is brought to you by Baker Orthotics and Prosthetics, and we are here for all of your orthotic and prosthetic needs. So give us a call today. Uh, You can call 817-332-7313, and someone will be available to you, and we will find the solution that's right for you. Today we have special guest Shannon O'Neill joining us uh, with our co-hosts Peggy and James. Uh, This month is... Physical therapy, therapy month. month. We should have yeah. had a drum roll, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, Shannon. Would you uh, like to talk a little bit about who you are and what you do? Of course. Thank you all for having me. It's an honor to be on your podcast and celebrating Physical Therapy Month. And uh, what better time to talk about uh, what physical therapy can do for our uh, persons with limb loss and, and people learning how to um, function better with their prosthetics. Um, I am a physical therapist, have been for about 16 years now. Um, I, I kind of um, got into uh, working with prosthetics and uh, the amputee population a little bit, um, not of my own volition. It kind of happened to me and I realized how much I loved it. Uh, and how fulfilling it really was for me, um, and have, have kicked the can down the road for, for about 12 years now, uh, working with this specific population pretty exclusively. Um, and uh, that's just what I do. I, I see prosthetics patients and potential prosthetics patients every day, um, nine to five, sometimes seven to nine. <laughs> so that's me here in Fort Worth, Texas. So you've been working exclusively with amputees, or is that just the bulk of your caseload? I am 95% just with Yes, ma'am. For the past 12 years? So you have seen a lot of changes, not only in the types of amputation surgeries and medical techniques, but in the technology that amputees are bringing with them to therapy? Absolutely. The technology is almost hard to keep up with sometimes, especially on above knee um, amputees, uh, but not just with them, but the, the foot and ankle complexes for um, prosthetic users in general have just snowballed in the last 10 years. Um, and so there's constantly something to learn about, constantly something new, um, uh, always an application um, that is being applied to one function or another uh, making people more mobile, um, getting people more in, included in, in daily tasks, but also um, higher level tasks and so putting people back in that kind of athlete category. Um, even elderly back in that athletic category, you know, uh, not just functional walking, but functional movement patterns, uh, golfing, hiking, um, running after grandkids, you know, putting people back out into their communities and getting them back to life. Um, the, the updates and prosthetics I've seen in the last 10 years is really, um, really, I think, speaks to that. Shannon, uh, when it comes to K levels, if someone was came in as a K2 and they felt like they want to be K3, working with you and having that documentation could change that, correct? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the, the biggest um, kind of goals that I have um, from a from a a therapy standpoint excuse me I think there's somebody behind me Um, from a therapy standpoint it's very often apologize for that noise Um, it's very often that we have somebody that comes in that's functioning at a little bit of a lower level Maybe they've been given a device that's new. Uh, Maybe they're longtime users with a new device that they don't know how to use. And and our job is to understand where they are, you know, at a baseline of a functional ability. Um, For instance, maybe they're scoring a high K2, you know, 33, 34, 35 on the on the AMP Pro. apply that new device, whether it be the first device they have or some iteration down along the line of, of prosthetic um, receipt, um, apply that new device and do therapeutic um, activities and 
um, interventions to get them using it at their maximum level of ability. Um, and obviously our goal would be to kick that K2 person up into the K3 category, get them more community uh, oriented and mobile and or the K3 people into the K4, um, but definitely want to bridge those, bridge those K level gaps. And that actually, you know, speaks to me in terms of um, a safe ambulator, you know, that's just a, a level of um, ability and, and, uh, and confidence that, that lends to getting through the day without falls. You're reducing mm -hmm. fall risk um, and, you know, you're providing these people with the ability to uh, maneuver in any situation. Um, you know, you've got the difference between someone who can walk across the street without, you know, stumbling and possibly getting hit by a car to somebody who can just pick up and go, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, I mean, it, it seems extreme, but that's a real world situation that we want to tackle through skills and ability, right, mm -hmm. and function. So, you know, I, I equate physical therapy um, to, and, I, and a lot of people find this a bit crude, but I'll say it anyway, um, but I equate it to um, giving someone a, a tool, like a prosthesis, is like giving um, a three-year-old a hammer. Then you send them to physical therapy and they're no longer a three-year-old, they're Michelangelo with the same hammer. Mm -hmm. When you give a three-year-old a hammer, what are you going to get? Holes in the wall. When you give it to Michelangelo, what are you going to get? The David, right? Same tool, mm -hmm. just different skill set. And that's mm -hmm. what physical therapists bring to the table. Um, and, and so you're also going to get a level of, of comfort as people know and understand their bodies and how they can adapt their bodies to the use of a prosthesis, how they can strengthen themselves in ways that they don't throw their back out like I've done to myself in the past. They don't throw their knee out. They're not falling, like I've said earlier. Um, and then that's longevity of health. And that's a better outlook mentally as well, right? You have a better um, sense of self-esteem, self-worth, because you um, are struggling less with this device that's under you that you don't really know how to operate. And, and now you're at this level of comfort and, and peace of mind. So you can move about your day and say, well, the prosthesis is just part of my daily routine. I just, I put my pants on like everybody else. I just put my leg on first, right? And <laughs> I go about performing the same tasks as everyone else. I don't feel different. It provides a sense of like normal mm -hmm. to the whole process. Well, Cody, I love, uh, I've heard your Michelangelo uh, analogy uh, in the past, and I've, I've stolen it actually several times. And, um, I think it's I think it's right there um, with just about the best analogy I can imagine. Um, you know, I, I talk about prosthetics a lot as um, tools, right? And a prosthesis in and of itself is is a an inanimate object, right? And what a therapist can do, hopefully is take a person with an inanimate object and teach them how to animate it, um, teach them the cues, um, you know, from the top down, this is how we control this device um, and integrate the device into daily movement patterns. When you do that, uh, your safety goes up, uh, your fall risk goes down, your quality of life goes up, uh, your versatility in your environment, whether it be in your home environment or your community environment, um, all of that improves. And that's really the goal of, of therapy. Um, as the goal of therapy, whether you're a prosthetic user or not, we want to improve safe, pain-free, functional mobility. Um, and really over the lifetime of the um, prosthetic user's um, you know, prosthetic experience and ambulation experience, you know, we're different movers when we're young uh, than we are as we get older. And um, we develop habits, some bad habits we get 
weak in places that need to be balanced with muscle strength. We get tight in places that need to be stretched um, and mobilized. And it's often not a very easy thing to do for ourselves. And so one of the things that I want to stress is, you know, it's, you know, physical therapy is not really just for that new prosthetic user that's just learning how to stand up and learning how to advance their limb and stance and swing. Um, it's also for, also for those longtime users that are getting a little bit asymmetric in their movement patterns and, and having some body breakdown here and there. Um, and so I really like to speak about um, therapy and relationships with, with clients of mine as, um, you know, I want to be their therapist for life. So I want them to leave me walking the best that they can, moving the best that they can, being as functional as they can in their home and their communities. But then I also want them to be on the other end of the phone, getting back in immediately when they have aches and pains crop up or, or uh, have any kind of decline um, and or get another type of prosthesis that they need to learn the nuances of. How does a patient know after their initial physical therapy and you get them kind of acclimated to their new device and, and up and walking and they quote unquote graduate, which we know you never really graduate from physical therapy because it is a lifelong, but I think a lot of, of individuals in the community don't really know when to go back. How do you know when it's just a normal, like, ooh, I'm getting old, my hip hurts, or maybe a physical therapist would be able to help me. Maybe I need to revisit this. When, when do you tell your clients that it's time to pick up the, the phone or to send you an email? I think if they have that thought, should I stay or should I go? Should I call or should I not? then it's time to call and have a conversation. And even just picking up the phone, I want them to call me and have that conversation. Um, and they don't necessarily have to come in to do that. You know, um, let's talk about what your, what your problem is today. You know, how long has it been going on? Is it something that I think I can help with or one of my colleagues can help with? Having that kind of consultation phone call um, to confirm, yes, you know, I'd like to really see you. Let's get you in and evaluate you is a, um, is a simple thing. And so I try to, I try to tell people, um, you know, don't let the grass grow under your feet, uh, before you call me, you know, because something that goes on for two weeks is easier to get rid of than something that goes on for two months. And, um, if I can't help you, I'll certainly let you know that, um, and um, I guess that's how I would answer that question. The other thing is, is from an allied health perspective, um, allied health in my, in my view is uh, the team of people that work with prosthetic users. That's myself, physical therapist, sometimes occupational therapist, uh, the prosthetist um, and their team at the, at the prosthetics office. Um, and then the physician, whether it be the primary care physician or the physical medicine rehabilitation doctor, all three of us are providers that are your team. We are the people in place in your community that work together to give you the best outcomes. And if you can't get in front of me and you have a question, get in front of one of those other two healthcare practitioners, uh, prosthetist or a PM&R doctor, uh, private private practice doctor even, and talk to them about what's going on sooner rather than later. They're going to help get you back to where you need to be, whether it's physical therapy, occupational therapy, or, or other. Shannon, I, I heard, heard you say uh, for life. Most people think that going to physical therapy is go to six weeks, six sessions, whatever it is minimum, but you mentioned for life. So what would be the difference in going, I, I did the six weeks, uh, I'll go do it myself from here on. The difference in six weeks, um, somebody going, you know, I'm going to be doing my, my thing from here on. I think the difference is bad habits. I think the difference is um, stasis in um, functional mobility progress. Um, I think when we, when we have injuries in even ACLs, for instance, ACL repairs, we'll see an ACL patient for three months and then we'll discharge them. And six months later, they come back for their running training. Um, it's not 
it's not over when it's apparently over. There's still healing that's happening. There's still functional movement. Uh, uh, progression to, to have down the road when different prosthetic devices are applied, especially in those higher level populations. You know, we're learning how to walk in one session, you know, but a year from now we may have a running blade, you know. Um, and so staging people's progress um, in with respect to time after their injury, skin adaptations and healing processes, um, pain management processes that happen with the new with with new amputees, um, and and progressing someone in in due time, I think is very important. So it's not six weeks. I've learned how to walk, and I'm finished with therapy. It very very rarely is. Even with elderly degenerative you know degenerative um, deconditioned clients, that maybe I just want to be able to stand up and walk to the bathroom in my house. You know, that those folks might be community ambulators in a year's time um, if we just give their their skin and their pain and their um, their their body time to heal. How closely do you work and how closely do you think it's maybe not necessarily you because this is supposed to be a broader topic, but how important is the relationship between the physical therapist and the prosthetic provider as well? It's, it is of the utmost importance. Um, I do some teaching actually uh, in some physical therapy schools. And then one of the very first things I tell them is um, A, they're uniquely qualified. Um, you know, amputees are, are people. They have strength deficits. They have range of motion deficits. They have functional movement, ambulation deficits, balance deficits, sensory deficits, et cetera. They just happen to have a prosthesis, right? Um, we do all those things. We do the strengthening, we do the range of motion, we do the ambulation training. But when there's something wrong with the prosthesis and it's not one of those things that's wrong with the patient, mm -hmm. then I've got to be able to pick up the phone and call my prosthetists uh, around town, whoever is the applicable prosthetist, and say, hey, you know, I don't think this is a hip strength problem. I think there's a rotation problem in this prosthesis. Can you help me? And I can't tell you how many times I have called uh, Baker specifically. And they, and their very first question to me is, is the patient still in this? And the answer being yes, is in my office. They're like, well, we'll have somebody there. We'll have somebody there within the hour. And they'll actually get in the call and come to the office, which is, you know, not right down the street. Um, and fix that mechanical problem that prosthesis in real time. Um, you know, the, the alternative to that is if that phone call doesn't get made to the prosthetist, the patient doesn't always know what to tell the prosthetist that's going right. on. And, um, you know, so there's a delay in, in good quality care there and a, a delay in functional mobility progress. Um, but then also very often, you know, if, if I call, if the, if the phone call does get made and I talk to the prosthetist and the prosthetist says, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll call the patient. Maybe we'll get them in. Well, they get them in two weeks after the phone call. That's four therapy sessions. A lot of times four to six therapy sessions where the person's not in the right mechanics, um, from a prosthetic standpoint. So it's really important to be able to pick up the phone. I have um, all the process, prosthetists that I know have my cell phone. Um, we text each other or email each other. We call each other in the middle of the night <laughs> and on weekends. Um, it's a real integrated relationship. It's very important to what I do. How can the patient role help facilitate that relationship between the prosthetist and the physical therapist? Well, I'd actually love to, to know um, James and Cody, what y'all's thoughts are on that. I think that, I think that a more, um, the simple answer for me is uh, the more proactive uh, a patient is, the better off their outcomes are. You know, I could be proactive, the outcomes can be better. Cody as a prosthetist can be uh, proactive, the outcomes are be better, but that patient is an active uh, member of their uh, medical team then they're going to have better outcomes, period. So, you know, when I'm calling around for them, 
and they turn around and follow up and call around for, for themselves, then things get better quicker. But again, I'd love James and uh, Cody, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. I, I would like to actually punt this to James and and discuss carrying the um, physical therapy modalities and treatment plans into a um, daily exercise regimen and how important that is. Well, you know, guys, I want to say this, that uh, my experience prior to being around you guys more, the more, the more around Cody, the more I learn, you know, just pick up little things from him. You know, he's, he's uh, like a little genie. You rub him and he comes up with stuff. You know? and, but we but like going to events with him um, and then meeting physical therapists, going to the colleges and speaking, and then seeing what Shannon, you're able to do with us um, to correct these habits. Sometimes we can complain that there's a problem. I kind of feel it back here. Well, it's it's actually not where I'm pointing at. It originates somewhere else, and you're able to correct that. And watching people uh, who might be highly active, but they're developing these bad habits, coaching us to the point where we were hopping around on one leg because it we had a sound leg, we were athletic, we thought this is a good idea, uh, especially my above the knee guys. And then you talk to us and we realize we're destroying the cartilage. And you educate us in such a way that it allows us to stop a bad behavior that would take away our ability to be functioning uh, long into life. Um, you're a game changer to us. Um, it's helped me to work, fix a lot of the deconditioning or the atrophy uh, by working with physical therapists. Uh, it's helped um, me to talk with athletes and help them correct. You know, just we, we pick up a bad habit and we'll maintain it. And one mobility clinic makes you go, oh, my God, I didn't see it, you know. And then now all of a sudden you feel like you realize a part of my coaching team isn't just a physical therapist, uh, isn't just going to the gym, working out. It's making sure that I have a physical therapist in my life to to keep me at the, operating at the optimal levels. You know, in fact, mm -hmm. I don't. Now that I'm I'm thinking about it, after going to the mobility clinics, uh, one I'm thinking of one particular athlete uh, that was with us in this last uh, CAF event, uh, who actually went back to physical therapy because of what he he picked up at the uh, event. So you guys are crucial to us. That's wonderful. Well, and I'd like to, you know, again, to the kind of home exercise daily routine carrot that you dangled there, Cody, uh, the spectrum of patients, your lowest uh, functional, functionally mobile patients to your highest athletic functionally, functionally mo mobile patients, everybody has got to um, condition and uh work their musculature and everything from their core um, to their hip musculature to their socket musculature. A lot of times people think, oh, well, I'm above knee amputee. My hamstrings and my quads, they don't really matter. They so matter. And uh, continuing to, to work that tissue and keep that tissue um, from atrophying um, completely atrophying is super, super important. So baseline home exercise programs, one of the very first things that I do, I have a, a day of objective measurement and talking and, and uh, understanding who a person is. And then the very next day we come in and I give everybody the whole spectrum of, of prosthetic users. I give them pretty much the same set of core things that I want them to do and constantly do like here I, you brush your teeth every day I want you to do these exercises every day and they're just going to keep you um they're going to keep your body moving and in, in the elasticity of structures um the way it should be for longer um and so home exercise program but then you know, back to the original question how does a how does a patient help themselves and how do they become um how are they as effective as, as we are, you know, as part of their own care team, um, communicating for themselves, keeping up with daily activities, but also the third thing, um, and I want to be careful not to say it's okay to have a, a week of rest here, but 
pacing yourself is important and knowing how to listen to your body is important and taking time to take that leg off and look and see if there that whatever you're feeling is a skin rub you know um taking time to ply ply properly if you use plies taking time to be intentional about about prosthetic care um i think is crucial it makes or breaks someone's ability to uh, get back up on their feet but it also makes or breaks therapy sessions a lot of the times if i've got somebody that doesn't pay attention and pulls a blister on a tuesday i don't see them again for another two weeks because we didn't pay good enough attention didn't pace ourselves the way we should have Mm -hmm. so i think pacing is a is a real important thing to point out um, and a, a good physical therapist, I think, would, would be teaching their patients that from one end to the other of their, of their therapy time. Well, I can tell you from personal experience that physical therapy has been a lifelong um, need for me um, as I have battled uh, bad habits and the consequences on my body <laughs> um you know you're you're more than your prosthesis uh, your body uh goes through different changes and as you um adapt and and overcome those things then you know you've got to figure out how to work you know in a new direction but still with that prosthesis so you know um my back deteriorated from a bad habit. Shannon helped me get through that. That was 30 plus years of using a prosthesis. You know, that's, wow. that's why it's important to have that relationship with them. Um, had I probably, you know, stuck to some more of those uh, at home um, techniques or, you know, kept my body in a bit better condition, then I may not have had such a detrimental effect um, going on inside of me from the way I walk. Um, Now, as you know, her treatment has progressed with me over time and technology has progressed over time. That's gotten a lot easier for me. Mm -hmm. And it's got, it's getting better for everyone as we go along and physical therapists are right there with the technology, you know, learning and growing with it and, Um, we're all trying to come up with better solutions to make function easier Mm -hmm. and, and, and everyone is dynamic and everyone is different and custom. Uh, so again, work with your, uh, prosthetist, work with your physical therapist to come up with the best treatment plan for you Mm -hmm. and and learn your body and listen to it. If you don't have a physical therapist, a great way to start the search is by talking with your prosthetist. Yes. Because your prosthetist is going to have relationships built with physical therapists like Shannon who have an interest and an expertise in amputee care. I will say from from my experience, when I became an amputee, um, I couldn't, well, first of all, I had to fight to even try to get physical therapy, but then I couldn't find a physical therapist who felt comfortable taking on an amputee. Right. So, um, you know, and if, you know, hindsight is perfect vision, right? In retrospect, I would have done things a lot differently. So I don't want another patient to be in that situation. If, if I were in that situation today, I would talk to my prosthetist. I would talk to the people in the support group there. Hey, where do you go? You know, what kind of results have you had? Um, for some reason, I was a, a new amputee and very shy and hadn't really found my voice yet. And I think that that's, a very common issue for especially individuals who have newly lost a limb. There's so much going on and so much has changed in the world that, you know, if you don't know if you need physical therapy, pick up the phone, talk to your prosthetist. If you have a relationship with a physical therapist, pick up the phone, send an email, say, hey, I'm having these issues. Is this something you might be able to help with? Or videos. I mean, now we can take videos on our cell phones and sell, you know, send them in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, and that saves a lot of issues as well. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm going to uh, tag on that. Um, I will, if there's somebody watching this who, who is a prosthetic user or amputee that has not had therapy, I'm going to tell you that you need therapy. There, there, is, there is a multitude of, of, 
of things that a therapist uh, can help you with. You have asymmetrical movement patterns. Um, you're going to get body breakdown if we don't try to, to get some symmetry in your movement patterns. Um, and, you know, perfectly bipedal people um, that don't have the, the same kind of movement patterns have degeneration uh, that catches up with them. And, and so walking with a prosthesis uh, and the inherent asymmetry that, that occurs with that um, will catch up with you. And, and so I, what my, my thought process is, is if you can make good habits and optimize symmetry sooner rather than later, then you don't have the problems that come um, later in life. You know, Cody was sharing a little bit about his struggle and uh, being a prosthetic user all of his life um, is, is very asymmetrical and, and has got some spinal problems because of that. Um, and over the years, that, that became a painful situation with him, but therapy helped him through it. Um, I would, I would hope he's still doing exercises he learned, um, when we were doing the therapy sessions with him. Um, but then advances in prosthetics, um, have helped him through it. Um, and that, that, I guess, if you want to talk about trends and in, in the last 10 years, I think the advances in prosthetics, the, uh, improvement in availability, um, of therapists that are qualified and, and, um, and, eager to see amputees in general. Um, I think it's, I think it's becoming easier, um, to get the right thing and get that individualized care for, for specific people. I, we did a social hour, uh, a week or so ago, or actually it was last week. And I looked around the room, there are 15 prosthetic users in the room. And I pointed out to them, so I want you to look around at each other. There's not a single person in here that has got the same prosthetic. Um, and the versatility and the, the dynamics of this industry has just blown up in the last 10 years. Um, and so there are resources and different tools out there for di you know, different strokes for different folks. And I just wanna uh, point those things out. Yeah, I think you brought up a great thing about the differences. Sometimes people will come to me and say, James, what do you, type of workout do you think I can should do as an above the knee? Well, that's something that's totally different. That physical therapist really has to be involved. The prosthetist, the weight bearing, each prosthetic has, there's different weight limits on everything. And so there isn't one size fits all. The customization that you do um, and the fact that what you think, Cody said 30 years he went with a habit and you were able to go back and help fix that habit. So it's never too late for you to start. Go, get in contact with your physical therapist, work with your prosthetist. Find out, don't start doing any of the exercises while making sure you're, you're healthy enough to do it. Don't just see someone else do it or take advice from a support group that another amputee said it, so it's law. Talk to your, because you're different. We're all different individuals. Even the three of us, totally different needs. Absolutely. Like I'm not going to just go out and deadlift 700 plus pounds on my prosthesis like some people in the group do. Peggy. Right? That would be me. Was that you? <laughs> uh -huh. So, you know, it absolutely, like James said, you need the, the, the whole total package of care tailored to your needs. You need to describe everything you're doing through your day to your physical therapist, to your prosthetist, and to your physician make sure they know what you're doing and that way we can tailor a plan of care not just the prosthesis right it's a it's a whole gamut of you know from physician notes and possible medications that they might have to prescribe you to dermatological creams or whatever you never know what you're going to need okay part of this is skin care remember that to you know the prosthesis setup the weight limits, like James said, to movement capabilities and proper techniques so that you don't damage yourself further when you go and try to beat the Indiana state record in the deadlift, like James. Okay, so um, be, be aware that you have the resources. Be aware that there are people out there ready and waiting for you. 
to to come out and say I need help. Um, and we can't know that you need help until you let us know when, or, or someone on the team lets us know that you need help. And um, don't be afraid to ask. There are people here for you. Um, and there's no shame in asking for help um, and saying, you know, I'm really struggling with something. That's okay. We'll get you to the place that you need to be. And we'll find needing that help. Solution. Needing help does not mean weakness, right? No, right. It's absolutely. actually strength to identify, you, you know, know I, I need assistance. And Shannon went something. to school and has, you know, sure. a dozen years experience. And I'm going to use her experience and benefit from it. Yep. So Shannon, uh, since it is Oct since it is October and it's Physical Therapy Month, uh, I think it's only appropriate that we kind of end this podcast with with your final words. And if you could share with us maybe one thing or two things that you really want anybody who's listening to this and is on the fence about physical therapy or hasn't ever gone through physical therapy and think that they might benefit or has gone through and had a bad experience. What, what would you say to those people about the benefits that, that await them if they go back? Well, I would say, uh, I would say that physical therapy is specifically a resource that is available to you. Um, it is going to um, change the way you move for the better improve the symmetry in which you can use both of your lower extremities, um, improve your safety. If you're worried about falls, physical therapy is the place for you. If you're having pain when you move, physical therapy is the place for you. Um, if you are struggling with endurance, um, if you are struggling with power production, getting up out of a chair, getting up a curb, um, if you are struggling in crowds um, of people where there are a lot of moving parts, um, physical therapy is the place for you. Um, physical therapy is a great resource um, for all of our bodies, whether we're amputees or not. Um, it's about safe, efficient movement production. And if you think you're safe, then you probably don't need us. And if you think you have good, efficient movement production, you probably don't need us. Uh, but I don't know that there's anyone uh, among us that can say that, including myself. Well, thank you so much for your time and, and for spending the afternoon and an hour with us today and sharing your expertise. And for all of the you know hundreds, probably thousands at this point of individuals with limb loss that you've helped to rehabilitate. So thank you on behalf of the community. Well, Shannon, thank you for all you've done for all of us. I really appreciate that very much. Uh, all my patients give just as much to me as I uh, hopefully give to them. So it's a, I'm blessed to be a part of, of, of this community. Uh, the prosthetics community, amputee community is a small one. Um, and it's growing, but it's a small one. And uh, I've been blessed to get to know and, and uh, serve a lot of people. And, and uh, it's reciprocated because uh, I have a wonderful job. So so tell us where people can find you if we, we do have listeners in Texas. So where so are I, you? I am in Fort Worth at a facility called Fort Worth Physical Therapy. I work very closely with Baker um, Orthotics and Prosthetics here in town and, and also around the state. Um, and so I, um, I am down here. Um, my, my clinic number is 817-423-5611. Um, if you ever have any questions, you're feel, please feel free to call me. We'll always call you back. Uh, if I'm, I'm with a patient, I typically will not come to the phone, uh, cause of that fall risk thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm down here in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, down with Cody. Fantastic. I have a feeling you all will see a lot more of Shannon in the future as a community. Um, so I wanted to let you all know she is uh, probably the best physical therapist I've ever met for amputees in my life. Wow. I'm not going to sugarcoat that at all. And I'm not, that's. That's strong praise. Uh, Shannon is the goat. It's, a, it's appropriate. <laughs> it's appropriate praise, honestly. Well, um, she just sees, yeah. 
absolutely sees so many people and has done so much work for the community um, inwardly and outwardly. So thank you, Shannon, for being with us today. Thank you all for having me. All right. All right. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And happy Physical Therapy Month. And we will see everybody in November. Bye. Bye-bye.